Hi everyone, how are you going? Uh, welcome to another video. Hope everyone's been keeping safe and keeping well. And uh, hopefully you've been getting out doing a bit of shooting lately. Um, I know I have. Uh, I've uh, managed to get out a few times lately and uh, even get some, some pretty good shots. Um, today's video is about something a little bit different. Um, recently I was on Facebook and I was scrolling through and uh, I'm not normally a person that enters into photography competitions. They're not my thing. Uh, but I happened to be scrolling through Facebook and I've seen some pretty nice looking reflection shots show up on the uh, the Canon New Zealand Facebook page and I thought, oh, what's this? And I had a look and anyway, it was a, it was a competition. Post your favorite uh, reflection shot here and you go in a, in a draw to win a, uh, a Canon lens. And I didn't really think much of it, to be honest. I just scrolled through my phone and found a uh, reflection shot which I'll show you here now, which is um, which is an image that I shot in July back in uh, near Twizel in the Hoarfrost, which was a pretty cool reflection image. So anyway, I posted this image, uh, didn't think anything of it. Next thing you know, I've got a message from Canon New Zealand saying that I won their competition and I won this lens. So it is a, uh, a Canon 50mm f 1.8 lens. Uh, a lot of people know this lens as the Nifty 50, they call it. Um, it's more of a, I guess it's kind of almost like more of a portrait type lens more than anything or something along those lines. So I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? Um, but anyway, it's a free lens, so I'm certainly not going to say no. So today's video, I've decided uh, I'm going to go out and shoot some landscape images with this lens. Um, I'm only going to use this lens. I'm going to put this uh, on my Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, my friends at Nissi Filters Australia and New Zealand have sent me, uh, kindly sent me an adapter ring that I can put on this lens so that uh, I can fit my Nissi ND filters on. Um, so I'm going to head out and shoot some landscapes exclusively using this lens. I don't know what I'm going to shoot yet. I'm really just going to head out and wing it and see what happens. Uh, I may not shoot the whole video in a day. I might shoot it over a couple of days. Um, we'll just see how we go. But my initial thought in my head is um, maybe go for, potentially go for some of those sort of more minimalistic kind of landscape images. You know, those really simplistic, minimalistic type shots and possibly even try um, some really long exposures as well. Um, that's what I'm thinking now when I get out there, I might look at something totally different, but um, might as well give it a go. Let's go, and, um, let's go and shoot some landscapes with a Canon 50mm lens. Let's get stuck into it. Okay guys, so you've probably worked out by now that uh, I've got different clothes on, so it's actually the day after I shot the intro. Uh, I didn't end up shooting any images yesterday. The afternoon was um, a little bit tricky, it was a bit windy, and I was also working on another project, um, some other photos that I had to get um, done as well, so I ended up doing that yesterday. So I've come back today, um, I'm in the same place as I was yesterday, much better weather today, um, much calmer weather. Um, the wind's really dropped off. It's actually a really lovely afternoon. It's um, the moment it's probably about 45 minutes before sunset. So I've walked along the, the lake here. I've come about a couple of kilometers along the lake and there's some, there's some nice stuff along the foreshore here. So um, I'm gonna challenge myself to shoot uh, with a 50 mil here. 
Uh, you, you can't actually see behind me there, but I've got the tripod set up already with the, the lens on it and the 50 mil. Um, immediately, as I started to walk around with a 50 mil and start to look for compositions, I instantly realised that this is a hard lens to shoot with. Uh, it's it's not a wide angle. I'm used to sh I'm used to shooting with either a wide angle lens where everything in front of you is in the shot, or with a zoom lens where everything in front of you is out of the shot and you're only getting the background. Uh, the first thing I noticed myself doing straight away was trying to zoom the lens um, because I'm just not used to shooting with a prime lens so it's immediately a challenge to shoot with a zoom lens and, and just walk along the foreshore here uh, I consider myself a reasonable photographer and most of the time I find getting compositions reasonably simple already I've worked out this is a hard lens to shoot with I've already been struggling to find a composition so that that's good that's a challenge and that makes you think differently makes you step outside your square that you're normally used to shooting in so immediately to me that's a good thing um, I've got the lens set up behind me on the tripod here I have framed up a composition uh, I don't know if it's the best shot in the world but I'm certainly going to try it so I'll show you that shot um, I'll probably put some ND filters on and just try a bit of a longer exposure with that and um, we'll see how it goes but Looking forward to the challenge, to be honest, because as I said, immediately I've noticed this is a hard lens. It's a hard focal range to shoot with. Um, when I think about it, I never shoot at sort of 50 mil. Um, I use a 24 to 70 a bit, and when I use that, I'm either at 24, like I'm at the wide end of it, or I'm at the, the zoom end of it, like 60, 70 mil. Um, and same with most of my lenses, like my 16 to 35, I'm normally shooting it at the wider end between say 16 and 20 mil. Um, and then with my zoom lens, my 100 to 400 lens, I normally shoot that at the at the high end. You know, I'm normally shooting at between two and 400 mil. So I don't shoot in that middle range much. So um, it's a good challenge. Let's have a look at this shot and um, see how we go. Okay, so you can see the back of my camera there. You can probably see the composition I've framed up there. Um, three little rocks in the foreground here. I'll just focus on those rocks to give you a bit more of an idea. It's a bit sharper. Um, pretty simple shot. Um, tricky to get the depth of field right, to get the whole sort of scene in the shot. I tried it as a vertical. Didn't work. Um, it kind of looks pretty good. This way, I like 50mm focal length brings the background in quite a bit, brings the background in closer, which I like. Um, I might just experiment with the composition a little bit more, um, but essentially I think it'll work, and I'll put some filters on here now. Uh, I'll put probably a 6 or a 10 stop filter on, and um, we'll try it as a long exposure and just see how it, how it goes. Okay, so hopefully you can already see where I'm headed with this. Um, I framed it up. I'm still not sure about the composition, if I'm being honest. But I'll shoot it. Um, three rocks in the foreground. This one over here on the far left is just clipping the edge of the screen, which is a no-no. I can't get it out, so I'll do that in Photoshop afterwards. Um, I'll move that. I'm just going to focus on that rock there, autofocus, I'm at f13, I don't know this lens, so I don't know where it's best points are, where it's going to be sharp and where it's not, um, most of my wide angle lenses I tend to shoot them around f8, because they're quite sharp at that, but I'm not sure with this lens, so we'll just see how we go, there's a nice reflection on the water now, if I dim that down a bit, you'll get a bit more of an idea of what I'm sort of seeing some nice colors um, I think it'll make a decent shot I'm gonna have a look at the histogram push it towards the right a bit probably about there so it's giving me 1.3 seconds at f13 and I've got an ND I've got a graduated filter in there already um, so immediately what I'll do here I'm gonna I'm gonna try a six stop filter so I will open up my Nissi filters um, app so my test shot there uh, without an ND filter is 1.3 seconds. So if I move this to 1.3 seconds 
and the bottom one to six stops, I'm going to need one minute and 25 seconds with a six stop filter. So I'm going to try that. So I'll slide my six stop filter in there. Um, one minute 25 seconds. I'll double check the focus again because I always do. Yep. So F13, we'll now go to bulb mode. Make sure we change our aperture to F13. 1 minute and 25. This camera has its own built in bulb timer, so I can go into that and put in my 1 minute 25. Okay, I just want to make sure I've got a two second timer on here because I was, yep. And we'll take that shot and see how it comes out. Okay, so there's our image. Don't know about it, to be honest. <laughs> I might have overexposed it a bit too, so I'll try it again um, and I'll also try another shot that I've just noticed and uh, see how they turn out. It's a really stunning evening. It's, um, it's calmed right down. There's almost no wind at all. Um, shot's just finished there now. Actually really nice. Happy with that. Smooth and calm, it's peaceful, it's just a beautiful evening. It's not, it's not cold, um, beautiful. Uh, there's been some of these pink clouds over the mountain here behind me. Um, I haven't videoed much of it, I've been too busy try, trying to get a shot here. Um, certainly a really challenging lens to shoot with this thing. It's not, to me, it's not a landscape lens. Um, there's a few little tricks to it. I've got my Nissi um, filters set up on it now and it's got a very soft focus throw on it so you can auto focus it but then once you wriggle your filters and so forth um, and try and slide your filters into the holder and those kinds of things you're actually putting the focus out so it's it's tricky you've got to put the filters in then you've got to refocus again uh, it's a challenging lens to shoot landscapes with but it's uh there's an image just finished there now and uh that's actually come up quite nice. I think I've actually got, I think I've got one good shot this evening. So if I can do that, I'm happy. Um, we'll come out and shoot some more stuff in the next few days. Challenge, as I say, challenging lens to shoot with. Shoot with certainly different to what I'm used to, um, but it's already taught me a few things. It's already taught me uh, something. I always tell people on my photography workshops is to slow down i see people when they go out uh, and go out shooting they tend to do things really quickly and um, so this lens is already i'm probably guilty recently of just going too fast and not not slowing down enough so it's already taught me to slow down um, in terms of composition it's it's harder to find a composition but I'm still doing what I normally would do is where I find what I think is a pretty good composition and I really just try and refine it. I don't tend to move much and that's what I've done here. I haven't really moved. I've, I've, I've just tried to refine this composition that I've got in front of me and I've moved the tripod up and down and I've moved back and forwards a few feet and just tried a few different things like that. And the last couple of shots I think actually came out pretty good. So I think there's one keeper there. So we'll see. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's the best of the light sort of fading now, so I'm going to pack up and head home. And um, tomorrow we'll get out and um, see what else we can find and see what other challenges the 50mm lens can present for us.
Okay guys, so I'm figuring you've probably worked out where I am by now. Uh, the very world famous Wanaka tree behind me in the background here. Uh, if you don't know where this is, I'm sure if you Google it you'll, you'll work it out. Probably the most photographed tree in the world, very famous. Uh, so this place is only not even 10 minutes from where I live. Uh, it's the middle of the day uh, and I guess the, the purpose of this video really is to challenge myself as a photographer to do something different to what I would normally do. So, um, you know, hence the reason for shooting everything with a 50mm lens in this video. And I think sort of lately, uh, more in the more recent months, I guess, I've really been expressing quite an interest in black and white photography. And uh, I had a look at some black and white images only a couple of days ago from a uh, a local photography friend of mine here and I was really inspired by his black and white photos that were captured in the middle of the day. So today's challenge, it's, uh, it's about one o'clock in the day, in the middle of the day. So I guess today's challenge to myself is to come here to the tree. Um, there's some really nice dark sort of moody clouds up there. There's some, uh, some nice sort of rain falling on those mountains at the back there. Uh, it looks quite atmospheric, so I guess today's challenge is to come out, put the 50mm lens on um, and try and shoot. Uh, my initial feeling is to shoot a long exposure. I don't want the water to have too much texture in it. I'd rather really just smooth that water out and have that very silky smooth. So I'm going to experiment with uh, some ND filters, probably a 10 stop and maybe even the 15 stop. Uh, ND filter and just see what I can come up with. I'd like to keep some texture in some of these clouds if possible. I'm not sure yet but I definitely want to smooth that water out so we'll see how we go. Uh, we'll experiment here. You may see this become a black and white image or it may remain as a colour image. I really won't make that decision until I um, get these images uh, on a computer and have a closer look at them. So that's today's challenge. Uh, the lake level here, uh, a lot of people always ask me about the lake level here. The lake level goes up and down a lot. Um, sometimes the tree's actually out of the water, normally in the autumn time or early winter. Um, this time of the year, the lake has come up probably, probably a metre since I was here a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of snowfall, uh, sorry, snow melt uh, at the moment. So that snow melts. There's a couple of big rivers that feed into the top of the lake. So a lot of that snow melt comes into the lake and then the height of the lake comes up uh, when the snow melts because it's obviously it's springtime now. You can probably see the tree has got some nice green fresh leaves, some fresh growth on it, um, which always happens. It's, it's spring now. It's actually quite warm today. It's um, t-shirt weather, you know, it's probably 16 or 18 degrees, which is really warm. Um, the only thing I guess I've got to sort of worry about here, if I'm shooting a long exposure, you can probably tell there's a bit of wind. Uh, wind and New Zealand in the spring go hand in hand. <laughs> it's, been, it's been windy for a couple of weeks, it doesn't stop. Um, it's quite normal here in the springtime to get a lot of wind. Um, so I guess that's my only challenge if I shoot longer exposures is that the tree will move around a little bit in the wind and uh, it mightn't be quite as sharp as I'd like it. But um, we'll just experiment with a couple of different shutter speeds. I definitely want at least a couple of seconds long just to really smooth that, uh, that water out. So we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll experiment and um, see how we go. It has actually started raining, so <laughs> things are a little bit on the challenging side. But in saying that, there's some really nice mood here, so uh, and there's good light as well. So I'm going to persevere. Uh, there's a few specks of rain coming and going. Uh, I'll just persevere and um, see what I can come up with here.
Definitely a little bit of a challenge today. There's a few shower, really light showers of rain rolling through. Um, it's not enough rain to kind of worry you or you don't get that wet, but it's just little raindrops landing on everything, glasses, <laughs> uh, lenses, filters. So it's making it a little bit tricky. Um, Definitely some nice sort of mood up the back there. It's some really nice mood in the cloud. So I'm just sort of experimenting with different shutter speeds. Uh, obviously because we're shooting with the with a 50 mil, we can't change our focal length. The only way we can sort of change our composition really is to move around, move left and right, back and forwards. But um, pretty much just keeping the composition pretty pretty clean and simple really. I'm not sort of overthinking it. I might try um, getting wet feet here, um, getting wet feet. I might try before I go, uh, I'll, I'll get a few of these shots first, but before I go I might actually try getting the camera down really, really low to the ground, uh, almost like at water level, and potentially, because there's some pretty nice little waves here on the edge of the lake, probably about a foot high, so I might even try and um, get some water movement, um, see how we go. So yeah, the weather really hasn't, <laughs> the weather hasn't been my friend for the last half an hour or so. It's just been, you probably see on my glasses here, the water. Uh, it's just been annoying rain, like just light drizzly rain, but it's enough to, um, enough to get over the lenses and filters and you just have to wipe it every five seconds. So um, I've got a few sort of reasonable shots there. I think I've probably got something to work with. Um, it looks like the rain's going to come in a bit now. There's there's a bit of weather coming down the lake, so um, I think I'll go home and have a cup of coffee and something to eat and um, take it from there. But I think we've got a few good shots, and uh, yeah, it's been been a bit of fun coming out today in the middle of the day. So um, we'll just see what happens. I reckon we might have a couple of shots there. Whether they whether they go uh, sort of whether I turn them into black and white or leave them colour and quite muted muted colors uh, I'm not sure yet but um, I'll work that out when I have a look at them but should at least have one or two shots there um, to show you and it's been um, been a bit of a challenge uh, I'll sign off go home and have some coffee Please let me know in the comments which image you like the most. I'd really appreciate your feedback. This one's definitely my favourite image, really pleased with the way this one came out. Just love the ambience in this image and the beautiful light on the mountain in the left hand back of the scene. If you'd like to help fuel my future photography adventures, you can head to the About page on my YouTube channel and buy me a cup of coffee. I'd really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you again soon.